one of the things, I almost I start every video with one of the things. Well, it's true. One of the things, and if you've followed this video series, you know why I'm doing this, and it's because I'm sort of answering a lot of questions or things that I observe in the entertainment community, at least the tier that I'm in or involve myself in. Um, and I hear repeated you know, things over and over again, whether it's fallacy statements, things people say, mantras that are chanted that just simply don't seem to be true to me etc etc one of the things recently that's been coming up a lot is um, I'm creative I'm an actor I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a cinematographer I'm a director I'm, I'm a writer I'm not business I'm not business I don't know I don't know about business why should I care about business I'll tell you why you should care about business and why you have an advantage all right you might not think that you're business savvy you're creative all right, I, you, know, you get into this industry initially because you're creative. You want something to do with the creative arts. The same reason you get into fine arts, into you know theater if you want to split acting or or entertainment, uh, into uh, into singing, uh, music, um, sculpting, even, p potentially even architecture, things like that. You, you get into them because you're creative, right? So business has this stigma and it's about like oh we think business we think uh a tight suit around your neck with a tie and for women you know like a, a tight skirt or dress and, and you know a, a, a three-piece suit for women no bs sort of uh you know ceo lawyer stuff why is that the case <clears throat> you know what a business is really like forget about all the language Right, it's somebody providing a service or selling a product or giving a product or doing something for somebody else in return for monetary compensation. What are you doing as an actor? Right? You just there to entertain for free forever? Because actors complain about working for free. I've never heard an actor say, I can't wait to not get paid again next time I act. Okay? Actors want agents and managers. Why is that? That's their business team. That's their business management team, right? So why do you think of yourself as not in a business, but an artiste, an orteur, a, uh, a painter, a sculptor, but not business? Ew. Well, with that attitude, you hear my voice crackle? It, it, it grinds my gears. Well, with that attitude... I can do a Seinfeld thing on it. What's the deal with actors? Oh, that was terrible. Woo, that was terrible. I'm so I'm digressing. If you want to have a successful career in any artistic field, and you do not want to be like Van Gogh, who died poor and crazy, and later on his painting started becoming worth millions and millions, if you want to be like Pablo Picasso, for instance who was able to sell his paintings for a lot of money during his lifetime, then it behooves you to understand that business around you is very, very important and understanding it is very important. Now, here's why you have an advantage. You're creative, and it's easier for a creative to learn business skills. Why? Because they're logical things that you just need to get over yourself on, like or with, and you just need to sit down and look at the numbers and come up with strategies and problem solve. It's much harder for a business-minded person to become creative because creativity has that. Now, I'm, I'm not saying, I think all of us have a certain amount of creativity in us. Some might not be the best at fine motor skills with our hands, so we might not, you know, be the best painters or, or sketchers, but then I can't even say that because abstract art is also a thing and sometimes that works out. Anyway, I don't want to sound uh, like nobody, you know, there are people who just can't do the other. I think it's harder to become creative and develop a creative mind because it's more abstract in its nature. It's more intuitive, interpretive, and personal in its nature. You can learn techniques for painting but making you a better artist uh, in terms of uniqueness. You know, you can learn an acting technique. You can learn shading. You can learn 
the fundamentals of music production. You know, you can learn your chords and your notes and your, you know, all that, all that stuff. But the symphony in which these elements come together to create an artistic, unique piece of art, that nobody can teach you. That is developed through experience, through creativity, through yourself, through your essence, right? As an actor, as a cinematographer, as a whatever. The business side of things is templatable. You can learn it. It's a A, B, C, right? It's a 2 plus 2 equals 4. You need to get with it. When people say I'm not business savvy, they're saying I'm too lazy or I don't, I'm too scared or I'm too intimidated by the business side of things. You're shooting yourself, not in the foot, in the head, okay? Literally. Because if you think you just want to go out there and be an artiste and then float around, then you will be that and that's fine. And if you're happy with that, and you're happy with the uncertainty, and you're happy with uh, come what may, then, then you're happy. And ultimately, that's what matters. So I, legitimately, I'm not saying, oh, well, then just go ahead and do it and be a loser. No. If you're happy, that's what matters. Most people that I speak to may say that they're happy, but there's a sense that they're not. And that goes for business too, like you're making money. That, that, you see, money doesn't buy happiness, creativity doesn't make you happy. I believe that the marriage of both leads to control of your life, which makes you happy. And if you can achieve that, you, it'll be hard, it'll be challenging, there'll be issues, but you'll know what to do, you'll know why you're doing it, you know if your agent's good or bad. You know if your manager's good or bad. You know if the money you're making is good. You know how to keep your money, stay on your finances, reinvest, build a business, all that stuff. That's all going to work in your favor and you will be happy. Now, why is acting and business already somewhat in the same real house? Let's niche it down into acting. And again, you can replace the word acting and put fine art or whatever it is that you want. Why is that the same as business? Every art needs an audience, okay? The audience needs to pay for that art. That's business, okay? That's an industry. So, you're within an industry, right? Unless you're an independent, in which case you're still going to want to make money. And, and, and even if you're a street performer, you're expecting people to put money in your guitar case. So, get over the fact that you're in business. And you're, 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 you are a business. And everything you think about should be business. Don't try and avoid it. That's the way the world works. If you want to reinvent the way the world works, start a new colonization on Mars. But then you'll have to get into business because you've got to get up to Mars first. So you're going you to have the money to do that. So you, you, whether you like it or not, you're stuck in this situation. And I think it's a great thing. So instead of trying to force your way and force the world around you to change or to not accept the way it is, embrace it, love it, enjoy it, because you can learn it and you can thrive in it. So now think about this. What is a business transaction? It's a, a good business transaction is a solution to a problem, okay? I have an apple. You're hungry, okay? You have a problem. You have a desired situation that you want, and it's in, in my hand, and you have a current situation which you're in, which is your stomach hurts. I tell you, you can have this apple. It's going to cost you a dollar. You give me the dollar, I give you the apple. You have reached your desired situation, and I have received compensation because I bought the apple for 50 cents. I've made a profit. It's a win for me. It's a win for you. That's a good business transaction. Win, win. Not lose, win. Not win, lose. Nothing. Like that, it is, that's a healthy business transaction, okay? There are bad businesses. There are shysters. There are good people. There are bad people. That's the way of the world. A good business transaction. There's nothing bad, evil, or corrupt about it. It is a win-win situation. Somebody gets something for offering something else, both parties are happy and get what they want, okay? Now, how does that reflect into acting? Artwork, okay? I want a piece of art. It intrigues me. The artist needs to get compensated so that he or she can keep producing the art. I pay for it, right? There's a scarcity to that artist and the demand, which drives the price up, right? When more people want that artist, that artist can only produce a certain amount of work. The more people want that artist, the more that artist gets respected, the higher the price tag, 
okay? But there's a limit to how much that artist can produce. Now, move over to films, TV, actors, right? Initially, there are millions of artists. Most people, most art goes for you know, a couple hundred bucks to compensate somebody for their time for painting it, but they're not a known, renowned, demanded name. What makes a hundred dollar painting different from a hundred million dollar painting? The demand, the prestige of the artist, okay? Whether you think that's fluff or not, doesn't matter. There's demand and people will pay it, therefore that's what it's worth. You as an artist need to look at yourself that way. If you have no credibility, no prestige, no name, no brand, you are a hundred dollar piece of art. Doesn't make you a worse piece of art, it just means the demand isn't there, okay? Increasing the demand is going to increase your sticker price. Why? Because more people will want you, your name will mean more, you'll have more pull, you'll have more pull for the project that you're on, more industry respect, more demand, therefore you can charge more for your stuff, okay? It's a business. What are you doing as an actor? You're solving a problem. There's a cast, uh, there's a crew, there's a production in need of a solution. They are in a current situation and there's a desired situation. The current situation is we have a project, we don't have a leading artist, we don't have our cast fully st stocked or fully cast. You are an option for their desired situation. You present to them what you have to offer. If they like it, a transaction takes place an audition, a transaction takes place after that audition where you get compensated and brought in to solve that problem. The problem has been solved, desired situation has been reached, business has taken place, okay? It has nothing to do with your ability to say the lines, perform all that stuff in the sense of what the bottom underlying nature is of what you're involved in. You're in an industry. You're an artist? Yes. That's your profession within the industry of entertainment. That's your business. Understand these principles and do everything that you can to split your brain and utilize each part of it equally. If you are a good business person and a good artist, you can be dangerous. If you want to learn more about this, talk to me about the Dracis program. Uh, I'll put a link in the bottom here. We help our actors create production companies, profitable production companies, learn about the business and create their own, you know, path to independence, creative and financial independence and so forth. So that's not, you know, a pitch, this video, but if you are interested in that, hit me up about it. Let's have a chat. Um, there's a uh, video, a free training about what, you know, specifically I mean by this on the, on the link uh, in the comments, uh, dreamreachmedia.com forward slash Dracis. Share this video if you think you know somebody who could benefit from it. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.